With the bombshell news of Mark Vinales leaving Yamaha, it has done a lot to the MotoGP transfer market and rider market for 2022 and beyond. But who is going to go where and who will replace Vinales at Yamaha? This video is really going to be based on assumptions and the information that we have now dated 1st of July 2021. When I release this video it could completely change within a week or a few days of the summer break happening. But we'll try our best to discuss who is going to replace Maverick Vinales at Yamaha and where the other pieces fall in this crazy story for the MotoGP season in 2021. Firstly, we'll look at Maverick Vinales and where he will go. The most likely and most predictable landing spot for Maverick at the moment is Aprilia. So it really will be a straight swap as he now is a free agent essentially from the 1st of January 2022. He can join Aprilia and join Alicia Spargo there. Now, for most of this season, we have thought that Andrea De Vizioso will be the writer that will join Espargo in 2022 at Aprilia, but likely he will continue to be a test rider and do the odd wild card in 2022. And I think that Davizioso will suit that role as I don't think teams are as willing to give a 36 year old the chance to go on a factory bike. And I think that Vinales does have age on his side, and no disrespect to Davi, he has tried his best for years at Ducati and as we know that split didn't work out too well for them. It kind of ended on a sour note. I think Davizioso has grown into semi-retired life uh, as a MotoGP rider and is more than happy to do the test rides and do the odd wild card. A bit like Danny Pedrosa in many ways. You know, Danny Pedrosa will do a wild card in 2021 MotoGP and I think Davizioso Davizioso will be the the same mould and I think he will enjoy that and plus he's a fantastic rider, one of the best that we've seen in recent history of MotoGP and Aprilia can add a lot of value to that bike along with Vinales, you know having that strong test rider and having the Vinales and Alicia Sparrow could be the, the catalyst to really take them on to the next level. The other landing spot for Vinales was talked about and it was the VR46 Ducati. I personally can't really see this, although it would be kind of strange but also very exciting to see. I don't think the, the philosophy of the VR46 team is really going to allow Maverick to come in, you know, being the only non-Italian rider in, in a VR46 setup. I think it's really geared towards bringing in the academy riders. So. The favourite for that would be Marco Bezzecchi who will join Luca Marini at the Around Co VR46 team in 2022. Unless Valentino decides to ride there, I will be very surprised, but who knows. And yeah, I think that team's pretty much nailed on. Then we look at Yamaha. So there's potential landing spots for many riders in this. We could be looking at potentially three seats being available. So if you take into consideration one seat's going to be available on the factory team and then two could be available at Patronus. So one is Vinales' seat. That could be filled by the obvious candidate being Franco Morbidelli, who is, in my opinion, Yamaha's best rider alongside Fabio Quattararo at this current time. His performances last year on an older bike merited the, the chance to get a factory bike for this season but he didn't get one so I think Yamaha should reward him with a factory seat for 2022 and then that leaves the other seats at Petronas now assuming that Valentino Rossi is going to retire and that's not a given it will leave two Petronas seats for 2022 so who do you put in them seats so we've seen in the news recently um, as this week even that top rack Raz Gadioglu um, isn't going to go anywhere in terms of moving to MotoGP. His manager Keenan Safoglu has said that he is staying at World Bike for the next two years and then they will look at MotoGP potential. So that's disappointing and I think that I would love to have seen Top Rack either in the factory team or Patronus but we'll just have to wait and see. I know there's a lot of 
confusion there with the and complications with the sponsorships of Monster and Red Bull, you know, who holds the most money, and with Patronus and the factory team being so heavily linked to Monster Energy, it would create a stumbling block in that. So Toprak, I can pretty much feel and say that he's not going to be involved in this plan to bring in the GP in the next year or two. But in the future, who knows, we could see him in MotoGP. Then we look at Garrett Gerloff, who was the replacement for Franco Morbidelli at Assen. I think that he is a real strong candidate for this. And I think that if there's the two spots at Patronus, he will fill in one of them because he fills in that American market that Dorna want to fill in. And it would be great for Patronus to have that sort of global how can I put it, global star for their for their branding, you know, they can branch out in America. So I think a Garrett Gerloff, who did do quite well, especially, you know, being his first dry weekend in MotoGP, he did very well. So he, he could look to cement the seat for 2022. I think he would be the fit for Patronus. And then the other Patronus seat, people are pointing at Jake Dixon or Xavi Vierge for the, the seat. I don't know if these two have done enough in Moto2 to actually merit a seat, but Jake, I think, is what Dorna want in terms of having a British rider on the grid. We don't have one. We don't have a British rider on the 2021 grid. And I think that because he's there in Patronus, he could then potentially move up and fill that void of, you know, being the British rider that Dorna want. I don't really think that Patronus are, how do we say, I don't think they're overly committed to putting Moto2 riders up just yet because I don't think they've shown enough but who knows I think it'd be more of a geographical decision for the the advertising of the MotoGP series having a lot of nationalities and bringing a British rider up would would do so and then we have the big market mover the the linchpin in this marketplace I think is Ralph Fernandez the rookie sensation in Moto2 now we believe at Christ.net he has a buy clause of around 500,000 euro for KTM and Yamaha could easily afford that now with the freeing up of Vinales' contract but where would they necessarily put him if they did go and buy uh, Fernandez out of his contract? I think that putting him in Patronus doesn't necessarily make sense as he is an outstanding talent. He is almost considered as a generational talent from what I've seen, how he's adapted to Moto2 has just been sensational. And if they were to buy him out of a contract, they would easily put him in the factory team. But then that leg leaves, do you just put him in Patronus and give him the same bike? Like, give him the factory bike, give him the same bike that Quadraro and Morbidelli would have if that would be the team. Yes, you could do that, but would Fernandez want to be in the factory team straight away? He seems very relaxed about Moto2 in terms of he wants to stay there, but it's if Yamaha want to pull the trigger and get him for their machines, I don't know. It's it's a tough one because you could put him in Patronus and then watch him progress and then eventually move him into the factory team. But with MotoGP, you know, we look at just how fast people can be whenever they get to the class. If you put him straight into the factory team, Bit of pressure there and a bit of challenge to Quattararo. You know, that would energize Quattararo, of course, having a younger teammate than him. It's just a really nice and problem to have. I think that there's there's benefits to it and there's negatives to it, but I think the benefits outweigh the negatives. And Ralph Fernandez, I think, would be a really great fit for this, this project for Yamaha to re-energize and get that youthful look to their team. But... It's KTM that are holding this back. I don't know if KTM are going to try and tie down Fernandez to a long-term contract and then bring him up in the MotoGP in the 2022 via the Tech 3 team with Remy Gardner. It's very difficult to decide where this is going to go. But if you were to ask me to predict where everyone is going to go for 2022, I think that it would be around Crow, Ducati would be Luca Marini, uh, Marco Bezzecchi, Aprilia will be Vinales, and Aspagro, then Patronus Yamaha will be Garrett Gerloff and Jake Dixon. I think 
that do you know what no i think it might be fernandez because i think yamaha have something planned for fernandez it just yet to be seen or officially confirmed but i think fernandez could end up on a yamaha so he could go into patronus and it'll be frankie morbidelli and quadraro on the factory seats so yeah let me know your predictions for the the crazy season in 2022 and yeah make sure to subscribe to crash motor gp for more content and also make sure to check us out on social media so yeah have a nice nice day guys and i will see you in the next video